贵州。The President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. On Thursday, and we just now before the break uh, said that Mr. Sun Sukun would be coming back to the courtroom to give his testimony, and this afternoon we will hear so see it. However, we have just obtained the information. From Mr. Sung Si Kun, that uh, he would uh, be able or healthy enough to provide the testi testimony this afternoon for another 10 minutes. Counsel, Um, could you, uh, uh, Mr. Pari, could you advise the chamber whether Mr. Sung Sukun is now fine to give further testimony for uh, this afternoon? Mr. Doj Pari, thank you, Mr. President. Indeed, uh, Mr. Sung Sukun indicates clearly that he would prefer giving his testimony this afternoon. The President, uh, Mr. Kanawas, uh, would you? mind putting the remaining of the questions to Mr. Sung Sikun this afternoon for about 10 minutes, as you claim. Uh, that would be fine, Mr. President. The President, the court officer is now instructed to call Mr. Sung Sikun and his jury counsel into the courtroom. President, without further ado, we would like to hand over to counsel for Mr. Ying Seri to proceed with his questions. You may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon to everyone. And good afternoon, sir. We left off this morning where I showed you part of your testimony on 15th of August where you indicated that you had called uh, Pi Pun and he came over to your house at 6 a.m. in the morning and dropped off his statement that he had given to DC Cam. And we were on page, the Khmer page is 40 to 41, French 52 to 53, and the English would be page uh, 49 going into 50. Now, further down on the same page, it says here that um, you asked a question whether he had anything, whether he gave you anything, and you said he did not have anything, and I also did not have anything. In the morning, he was having breakfast with a representative from VESU, and we did not speak about anything related to court. And then you go on to give your reasons for meeting him. Now, going back to my original question, whether it was one meeting or two meetings, in reading your statement of the 15th of August, it would appear that 
the first time you met him was in your house at 6 a.m. in the morning, and then either that day or another occasion, you met him when he was having breakfast with a representative of the West Sioux. Was it one meeting or two meetings? Response. I met him on two occasions. First, before he left for Phnom Penh from Malai, he met me at my home in Malai. Later on, I met him on another occasion at the Mittepeep Hotel near Watka. Okay, so uh, when you met him the second time, was he still testifying in court? Response. I met him on Friday, if I recollect, and his testimony was not yet complete. And he was on the way to his child's home somewhere, I don't know. And he said that uh, on Saturday and Sunday he would uh, come back to spend uh, the night at the Mittepeep Hotel. Okay, uh, just to make sure that I have uh, that I have it right. You met him twice. First time at your house where he came with a document. He then came and testified or gave part of his testimony. Then he came back to Malai and that's when you met him the second time. Response. Not that uh, I met him first in Malai, and uh, he came to Phnom Penh to give testimony. A few days after that, I met him at the Mittepeep Hotel near the Watka Hotel, uh, Watka Pagoda. Now, did you speak to him about his testimony the first time, when apparently, based on your testimony, you called him? and you asked him to come and bring you his DC CAM interview. Response. During the first occasion when I met P. Poon in Malai at my home, he gave, uh, he brought along with him the interview he gave to the DC CAM on the searching for truth. Uh, this interview was conducted uh, a long time ago, the interview he brought uh, with him to me. Okay, but I just want to make sure that I have the facts right. Did he bring it along or did you request it? And then when you requested it, did you ask him about his testimony in court? Response. I personally requested for the document from him, but I met him before he came to the court to give testimony. So, we, uh, I, I want to make sure that it is correct. I met him before he came before the chamber. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, at some point you said that one of the reasons you uh, wished to meet with him was so that you could, uh, pre you could be prepared to respond to the court. And here's what I want to know. 
why did you think it was necessary for you to prepare yourself to come here to give evidence? And in preparing yourself, you needed to ask people and for assistance. Response. I was not really preparing something. I was just wanting to ask him what kind of questions uh, he would be asked or was asked so that I could be able to provide the full testimony before the chamber. I was afraid that I would not be able to recollect everything because these things happened a long time ago. All right. Now, we know from your testimony that you listened to his testimony over the radio. I believe that's what you said. We now know that you spoke with him. We also know that you read his statement to DC CAM, which you say he gave you before he testified. Is there anything else that you looked at or studied other than your own statements before coming here to give your evidence? Response. I didn't read his statement when uh, concerning the one he was about to uh, give testimony before the chamber. I only read uh, the statement uh, that uh, was written on the search for the truth. I knew him as a people not Jim only, no other names. Uh, thank you. With that, I have no further questions. Uh, we wish to thank the gentleman for coming here to give his evidence. So on behalf of Mr. Uh, Inksari, Mr. Angodom, and I would like to thank you and wish you safe travels and the best of luck. And thank you, Your Honors, for allowing us the time to question this witness. We know it's been very difficult in testing. Thank you. The President. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mr. Sung Sikun, your testimony has now come to an end. Uh, you are now excused. You are free to go back to your place. And the court thanks you very much indeed uh, for giving up so much of your time to give testimony before this chamber. We appreciate your great effort, patience, and uh, your testimony contributes a lot to the ascertaining of the truth uh, before the chamber. The chamber would like to wish you all the best and wish you travel back home safe and sound. Court officer is now instructed to assist uh, with uh, Wesu to ensure that Mr. Witness can be returned home. Thank you.
The President, uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Saw Siak. The Chamber continues to hear your testimony today. Yes, uh, rather, uh, during your current testimony, at that moment you were too emotional that uh, we could not uh, continue our proceeding, and we already consulted uh, with the vessel unit to ensure that uh, someone is sitting next to you, someone who can consult with you or at least uh, to be with you to ensure that uh, you can cope with your emotion when giving testimony. Mr. President uh, says uh, Nimul. I am Nimul from the Vesu unit, uh, Your Honours. The President uh, Thank you very much. Uh, you have already been informed that uh, Vesu unit uh, is pro or has provided us with a staff member to assist uh, witness Saw during her testimony. So the chamber has admitted uh, Mrs. Nimo to assist witnesses are sick. According to our schedule today, it is time for the prosecutor to proceed uh, with their remaining questions. The chamber would like to know how much time co-prosecutor would need uh, to put questions to the witness, uh, because we have learned that perhaps you would need only 10 more minutes, as we uh, still recall. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, 15 minutes might be closer to the um, estimate. Um, just overall, we've done some um, uh, um, planning in terms of time between us and our colleagues, the Council for Civil Parties. Um, Last week, we um, had asked the um, senior legal officer to um, shorten our allocation for this witness uh, from one and a half days to one days and a quarter um, in order to allow an extra uh, quarter of a day for the next witness, which is, we understand, TCW 338. Um, and looking at the real time um, and where we are now, by my calculation, we've done approximately three hours and 50 minutes, um, which would leave um, approximately two hours and 40 minutes uh, on the basis that we are um, given a day and a quarter. Um, and if that is, um, if we have your leave to proceed on that basis, I will take approximately 15 minutes, and then the rest, um, approximately two and a half hours or, or thereabouts, would be left to my colleagues um, on this side of the bench. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and good afternoon, Mr. Sarsiak. As you heard, um, my questions will be fairly brief. Um, what I would like to do is simply uh, go back to uh, your testimony from last week and clarify um, just a few uh, specific matters. Firstly, um, I asked you um, about um, the order uh, or instruction that was given on the 17th of April 1975 to delay entry um, by three days in order to allow um, for the evacuees to, to leave Phnom Penh. And there was one aspect of that uh, issue that I wanted to clarify with you we now have a transcript of your interview with the investigators, and for the record, this is document D200-6.8, and there is a, uh, a difference in the account that you gave the investigators to, the, um, to how you responded to my questions last week. And I just want to see if we can reconcile that difference. 
um, you told me that you recalled that the instruction had come from Tivol and Hunim and that it was your uh, unit chairman, Sal, that had uh, um, passed on this instruction. Do you recall that? Response. I, I'm not sure what kind of instruction was uh, about. Could you please give me more details on this uh, to the President? Yes, I was referring to the uh, instruction to delay entry into Phnom Penh um, by three days because more time was needed for people to fully evacuate. Response. At that time, my superior did uh, give this instruction to us to spend uh, some time at Chattaras Mountain, um, be there until the city was evacuated before we could be allowed to enter. And, and do you recall um, telling the court last week that you recalled that it was Tivol and Hunim that had issued that instruction and that Mr. Q. Sampan was not one of the people who had, who had given that instruction. The President. Mr. Co-Prosecutor, please uh, repeat uh, your question because it was not uh, rendered uh, by the interpreter. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we will do so. M Mr. Sasik, um, do you recall telling us last week that um, you, as you, as far as you could remember, it was uh, Hunim and Tiv Ol that had issued that instruction and that it was not Mr. Q. Sampan? Do you recall saying that? Response. I learned about this from my superior, and uh, it was not Mr. Kilsampan who told us. It was our superior uh, at that time, who, the head of the our team, who told us. I do understand that. My question is um, as to your recollection about where that instruction originated. Um, and I'm going to read to you now from your interview with the investigators, and this is the document I referred to uh, earlier, D200-6.8. Um, the Eng English ERN is 00834863. The Khmer ERN is 00833490. And French, 00835914. I'll read uh, this brief uh, discussion or this part of it. Question, aunt, did you hear of that evacuation from your chairman or did your chairman issue the order to evacuate the people? Response, no. This might have been from others making the communication from the side of those grandfathers and then the instruction was given to our chairman saying that the, their entry was not yet possible like that because the people were evacuated in the wrong direction. Question, who were the grandfathers you have spoken about? Answer, those three uncles. Question, Q Sampan, Son Sen and Hu Nim, those three persons? Answer, yes. Mrs. Sasik, I know you've told us that Son Sen uh, that you only met Son Sen in Phnom Penh um, when you entered. But does that refresh, re refresh your memory as to where the original instruction came from? In this statement to OCIJ, you specifically include Mr. Q Sampan as one of the people who gave the instruction.
response. So far as I remember, I did not hear directly from Mr. k i l s o m p o n but my chairperson, Mr. s a o and t i l o l and h u n a m I heard uh, from them, and I also gave my statement to confirm this to the uh, investigators who conducted the interview, and I referred to them as om om. Or uncles, because the elderly people. Thank you. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll move on from that point. Um, we also discussed um, anniversary speeches last week, and you will recall there was one particular speech uh, or, or transcript of a speech that I uh, made a reference to, and it was a, a speech attributed. To Mr. Kyu Sampan um, in April 1977. Um, what I want to ask you about is your knowledge as to whether broadcasts of speeches were made by the radio. So, could you tell us whether you recall whether there were broadcasts of speeches by? The party leaders or the country leaders that were made um, on the radio station where you worked. I do not recall it. Very well. Um, we will return to D two hundred slash. 6.8. Um, again, this is a transcript, word for word, of your interview with the um, investigators. And this section starts in Khmer on 00833495, French 00835919, and English 00834. Eight six eight. And it starts at the bottom of the page in each of those languages. Um, I will read um, the relevant parts to you, uh, Madam s a s i k and see if you, if you recall this interview. If this refreshes your memory. Question: Or Nun Chia, or Pol Pot, or Ying Siri. Did they ever come to the Ministry of Propaganda to make any statements live on the radio, or speak about their instructions or principles? Answer: No. If they wanted to deliver a speech or communicate some information, they recorded it on a small cassette player. A little bit further down, question: So a small cassette player would be brought in? Answer: Yes. Tape recording. Question: Tape recording. Answer: Yes. The recording will be brought in, copied, and echoed. Madam s a s i k does that refresh your memory that tapes were brought in from the leaders to be broadcast on the radio? Mr. President, that is uh, correct. And if the uh, leaders addresses uh, the mass during uh, important festivity, normally um, it was uh, tape recorded, and that recorders was uh, recording was passed to us for broadcast. And do you recall whose? Uh, speeches they were. I am sorry, I cannot recall. And do you recall hearing the actual tapes? Uh, 
demander le retour. No, I don't. But if uh, there were important speeches to be uh, delivered to uh, the popular masses, I uh, had to listen through radio for, for, uh, broadcast myself. So then you did hear um, some speeches by the leaders delivered on occasions such as the anniversary of the 17th of April. Is that correct? I do not uh, recall this detail. But in certain uh, cases, I uh, overheard the broadcast through radio, but I did not pay attention to, to them. Thank you. And moving on to um, another topic, briefly. We also discussed last week a, a meeting that you attended with Hunim and a meeting that was cut short because he was um, he was called away and then and then never returned. Do you recall what the occasion for that meeting was? What, what if any program or broadcast were you discussing with Hunim? I would like to respond to it to this question as follows. The meeting was uh, simply to uh, draw the lesson learned uh, relating to the uh, art performance and uh, the reading out of the news, for example, on the radio. Uh, this was the meeting in order to draw lesson learned. Your Honours, uh, in the short time remaining, um, with your leave, I would like to um, read out to the witness a brief excerpt from um, a document that we've referred to before. Um, it is a letter written by Hunim on the 10th of April 1977, um, and it is addressed to uh, Pol Pot, uh, Brother Nun, Brother Van, Brother Vaughan, Cadre Q, and Hem. It's document introductory submission 5.30. Um, with your permission, I'll just read the first paragraph and see if this refreshes the witness's memory as to the circumstances of the meeting. Yes, you may proceed. Madam Sikh, um, I'll read the first two sentences of this letter. Today, the 10th of April, 1977, I apologize, I will first give the ERNs, I just realized I haven't done that. Um, Khmer ERN 00008923, French 00766902, and English 00249844. And I'll return to the document. Quote, today, 10 April 1977, while I was extremely busy preparing a radio broadcast to memorialize the second anniversary of the great victory of 17 April 1975, Cadre Pong called me on the phone to work with Ankar. I was very surprised and did not expect to be arrested by our military. Madam Sikh, looking at that passage, it suggests that this event took place uh, on the 10th of April 1977 and that Hunim was working on a broadcast in relation to the second anniversary of the 17th of April victory. Um, does that refresh your memory of the meeting um, that you had with Mr. Hunim that day when he was called away? No, I do not recall this. Who is the Pong referred to uh, in this document that I just read out? Um, 
Mr. President, I don't really know this name. Because our time is limited, I'll just indicate that the witness discusses um, this individual at uh, in D200 slash 6.8. Uh, Khmer ERN 0083 French 0083 and English 0083 um, You told us last week, Madam Sikh, that you had gotten to know uh, Mr. Q. Sampan and his wife after 1979. Did you ever discuss with them who names disappearance? Mr. President, I uh, actually knew Mr. Kilson Pond during the war time, the five-year uh, period of war time. But as for his wife, uh, I got to know her let, at a later date. Uh, but I had never had any uh, personal conversation uh, with them. And just a, a, a couple more questions. Um, you said you never had any personal conversations with them. Um, how is it that you got to know Mr. Q. Sampan's wife? From 1979 to 1982, I met her in office uh, 808 along the Dong Rai Mountain. At that time, I met her. Did you work with her or with Mr. Q. Sampan? No, I did not work uh, with either Mr. Q. Sampan or his family, but I worked in a unit, uh, the transport unit, in 1982. Now, you told us uh, Mr. Q. Sampan's wife came to see you. How was it that she knew where you lived in 2010? I cannot recall the, the year, but before my, uh, f my husband passed away, she uh, went uh, to meet my uh, husband, and she wanted to know whether or not uh, Mr. Kilson Pond had ever uh, been to the uh, propaganda uh, unit. Uh, but at that time, my husband was not around. And, but before that, I did not uh, know her personally. I did not ha have any personal conversation, her, but, uh, a conversation with her, but I simply knew her. Let me just repeat that question. It's my last question. How did she know where you live, where you and your husband lived? That I did not know the, um, how she could uh, get to know me. Probably she noticed me when I was performing uh, arts or so, uh, but she knew my husband. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Sasik, and thank you, Your Honours, for the time extended to examine this witness. I have no further questions. President, thank you. Now I hand over to the lead co-lawyers for the civil party. You may now proceed. Lawyer Pichong, thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours, and good afternoon, everyone. 
and also good morning to Madame Sosit. Ms. Benye will uh, take the floor uh, to put the question to you, and I will uh, take uh, the question after she completes uh, her version of the question. The President, yes, you may proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Good afternoon, everyone in and outside of the courtroom. My name is Beni Ye. I am one of the international civil party lawyers, um, and I'm here today to ask some questions to you, Madame Sosiek. Madame Sosiek, um, first, I want to talk a bit about the time you were working at the Ministry of Propaganda in Phnom Penh between April 1975 and early 1978. You said that at that time you were a singer in the arts unit of the Ministry of Propaganda. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, uh, lawyer. Following the liberation of 1975 to 1977, uh, after 1977, I left uh, and joined the Ministry of Propaganda. Um, when you, as a singer, did you have to memorize the text of the songs that you were singing? Whenever there was a live performance or a performing arts uh, in certain place, uh, then we had to uh, rehearse. But if uh, it was uh, recorded uh, or recorded on the disc, uh, then we had to look at the manuscript. Do you remember what the text of the songs talked about? I can still remember the song entitled The Liberation of Phnom Penh on the 17th of April 1975, but I cannot uh, remember them all. It has been a long time. I forget most of them. You don't, do you remember any other topics except for the liberation in Phnom Penh from the songs? or from the performances that you did? I, I can only uh, recall the uh, title of the uh, performance or the story. Um, for example, everything for the revolution. And as for other traditional performing arts uh, of Cambodia, I cannot recall the uh, names or titles of those stories and performing arts. Can you tell us who wrote the text of these songs or who wrote the stories for these performances? Lawyer, in my department there were different sections. For example, if it is a uh, song composition uh, section, then they may uh, draft the text of the song. And even those who were uh, blind or they were handicapped, they were also asked uh, to uh, design or to uh, compose uh, songs or so. And then uh, it was passed to somebody else in order to refine and fine tune the language of the songs before uh, it is sent to us uh, to sing. But uh, it was not confined to the uh, handicap, the phys physical handicapped uh, people, but there were other peoples as well who were in the 
uh, song comp composing uh, section. So there were different sections under the department with which I was attached at that time. And the song composing section, was it under the control of the Ministry of Propaganda? Yes, yes, it was under the Ministry of Propaganda. Thank you. And you said you also had to record songs for the radio. Were these songs broadcasted on the radio? Yes, they were. And do you know what was the purpose of broadcasting these songs over the radio? Uh, I did not uh, understand the motive of broadcasting the, these uh, songs, but I think uh, that the prime motivation was uh, to encourage people uh, to uh, strive to grow crops and other agricultural work. Was the Ministry of Propaganda the only one recording songs during the Democratic Cambodia? Yes, only Ministry of Propaganda was uh, entrusted uh, to record uh, songs in order for broadcast through national radio station. And do you know if they broadcasted any other songs that were not recorded by the Ministry of Propaganda but recorded by other artists before the Democratic Cambodia? No, they didn't. Do you know what the reason was for, do, for not doing that? In my understandings, it was not compatible with that, uh, the circumstance and situation at that time. Can you explain further what it means not compatible with the situation at the time? Because uh, at that time we gained uh, independence. It was not uh, the situation of the previous regime. So the songs from the previous regime were regarded as inappropriate for the time of the Democratic Cambodia, is that correct? Uh, I do not understand uh, it very well, but uh, practically at that time, uh, those songs were not broadcast. And do you know what happened to these old songs? I, that I do not know and I do not understand it either. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to come to a different topic now. Um, you mentioned that after uh, Honim's disappearance from the ministry, other workers of the ministry were also removed. Now, I would like to ask you to tell me if you know some of the people that I will give you the name of. And I will start with a person named Choi. Do you know the person named Choi? Yes, I do. Uh, Choi uh, was uh, was in charge or uh, of the work over there uh, following the uh, the removal or the transfer of 
Poonam. Do you know his full name? I do not know his uh, surname, but uh, people call him Om Choi or Uncle Choi. And can you tell me what his responsibilities were at the Ministry of Propaganda when you say that he was in charge of things? He came to take the place of a uh, whole num, and he was uh, tasked to oversee uh, works of different sections. And did uh, Choi at some point leave the Ministry of Propaganda? Yes. Uh, later on, I did not uh, see him anymore. And then after that, uh, I also left uh, this ministry, so I did not know or have any information of that ministry anymore. But he left before you left the ministry, is that right? No, I left earlier than he did. I left uh, the Ministry of Propaganda to the printing house, uh, the state printing house. Um, Mr. President, with your permission, I would like to read from the OCIJ statement of Madame Sosiek, document number E3-379, English ERN 0032-3334. Khmer ERN 00294810 and the French ERN 00385207. In the in the the president, you may proceed. In the OCIJ statement, Madame Sosiek, you said that I knew Choi. Choi was arrested in approximately 1977. Choi came from the Ministry of Education. Do you still stand by this statement? I might have uh, confused uh, this on this point. Actually, Choi was the one who uh, sent me to the uh, Department of Printing House. But later on, uh, Choi disappeared from the Ministry of Propaganda. That's what I knew. Uh, I learned later on that he was not the person in charge of Ministry of Propaganda, but it was him who sent uh, me to work at the uh, state's printing house. I met him for a short while. How, how did you know that he disappeared after you left the ministry to go to the printing? I actually did not know whether or not uh, he was replaced or he was transferred to somewhere else, but I knew that uh, he just disappeared from this ministry. Um, for the record, Mr. President, I would like to um, I would like to mention the document E3/342, which is a revised S21 prisoner list, and the name of Choi alias Sao Chan can be found on this list under the ERN number 00329972, which is the ERN number for English and Khmer both. I would like to move on to another person. Um, did you know the person called Han? Are you talking about Han or Han? I'm speaking about Han.
channel three home school ham. Yes, uh, I I do. Can you tell us what his responsibilities were? Response. Han was a writer. He helped com uh, writing and correct uh, some of the radio broadcast texts, including information or news broadcast. Do you know his full name? Response, no, I don't. And can you tell me what the other Han's responsibilities were? Response, another person is by the name Han. He was on, in the group of the music hall or music band. So we have two people, one person by the name Han and another by the name Han. Um, I would like to know more about the music, uh, the person from the music unit, Han. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, can you tell me if this person left the Ministry of Propaganda at some point? Response, yes, he did. He left before I left uh, the propaganda sec uh, section to the printing house. And did he leave because he was transferred to another unit, or do you know why he left? Response, I don't know. I do not know whether he was relocated or not, and I still don't know until this date. Do you know something about his background? Response. I knew him through some conversations with him and he talked to me in detail his background. He said he was an intellectual from Russia. He educated, uh, indeed he was educated in Russia and he returned to Cambodia. I do not recollect uh, in which year he came back from Russia, but I met him in 1973, and we had uh, been working together all along until he disappeared. For the record, I would like to cite the same document that I just mentioned before, E3-342. Um, which lists Han alias Ngong Cheng Li as a music teacher from the Ministry of Propaganda um, under the ERN English and Khmer 003 29863. Madam Sosiek, another person I would like to ask you about is called Mon. Do you know a person called Mon? Response, yes, I do. I remember the person by the name Mon. Can you tell me what he did at the ministry? Response, he was an assistant. He worked in the same group as Han from the music uh, band. I do not know who would be the team leader, but he belonged to the same group. And again, I would like to ask you, did Mon leave the ministry at some point? Response, yes, he did. He left from our ministry. 
And do you know where he went to? Response. No, I don't. Mr. President, again, I would like to refer to the document E3-342, which lists Mon alias Malcolm Sreya as member of performance group K33 of the Ministry of Propaganda. And this is, can be found under ERN English and Khmer 00329829. And now, Madam Sosik, I would come to a person that you've mentioned frequently before, Sao. Can you tell me again what Sao's responsibility was? Response. Sao was in charge of the art group. He was overall in charge of the art section. Do you know his full name? Response, no, I don't. And was Sao, did Sao leave the ministry or was he removed from the ministry at some point? Response. I do not recollect uh, the exact date, but he was relocated. Mr. President, again, I would like to cite the document number E3-342, the S-21 prisoner list, which lists Sao, alias Tate Siem, as staff of the Ministry of Propaganda under the ERN number e English and Khmer, 0032967 Thank you Madam Sosiek Now I would like to ask you a few questions on what happened in early 1978 I know this is going to be difficult for you to answer but I think it's very important that the court will hear about this because many victims may have experienced similar things as you have so please take your time with the answers. You mentioned to us last week that you were removed from the Ministry of Propaganda in 1978. Can you remember what month it was? Response. Actually, I think I wish to elaborate a little bit on this. That doesn't affect me myself, but it affects my whole family. Would you like to tell Would you like to tell us more about what happened to you and your family? Response I would like indeed to tell you about my family. I got married in 1976. I got a daughter. However, my husband was removed from the location. I have no information about him. I don't know whether he alive or dead. In, and later I was uh, taken to study session, but it was not at the study session. I was placed at Bottom Pagoda and my little daughter kept walking outside of the fence and uh, I tried to grab her then uh, some male uh, some men came to me to, to stop me from going out of the compound 
and then I was told that I had to remain in the building because I would be seen by the visitors. And I told the man that how could I be seen by visitors because we were concealed by the corrugated metal uh, wall. And at that time, I was told also to pack my luggage to go further. Then I moved to an office where food uh, would be offered to us and we I was told that I would be taken to Dai Graham. On the trip uh, I was asked whether I knew Dai Graham and I said uh, I knew Dai Graham and uh, he told me that I had to be tempered uh, there. Only after I recorrected myself I could be returned to Phnom Penh. I was saddened by the news because I never done anything wrong. My husband lo uh, disappeared and I could never meet him again. So I, now I did nothing wrong and I had to be tempered. I got married again, but in 1993. The President, uh, thank you, witness, and thank you, Council. Uh, since it is now appropriate time for adjournment, uh, we adjourn for 20 minutes. The next session will be resumed by 3 o'clock. Uh, court officer is now instructed to assist the witness and uh, her assistant uh, during the break. Some culture.